It's wonderful to see you again today. Uh, bass is, you know, it's my main instrument. I really enjoy it when I meet somebody who really digs the actual bass. And they're like, eh, I don't care about six rings. Four is where it's at, or five. What happens is you start learning just these tones and where they are. You will never need to learn another thing besides adding on another string. And it all becomes relative because when you add on that B string or play it as a C, you know where the other notes are because you've been doing it for so long. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you where the octaves are. And then we're going to go into our song for the day, Money by Pink Floyd. What we have here is E, P, D, G. And what I'd like to do is show you that the octaves for your low F, which for you, I've got this fifth string, but we don't have to worry about that. In fact, I can down tune it and move it out of the way if that helps too. Get, some, get, some, get it all night. Yeah. All right. So that string is down tuned and out of the way, hopefully. So what I'm showing you here is on your lowest string here, the F, if you have your F and you skip a string and then play the high F here, you've got two Fs. Low F, high F, low F, high F. If you scoot it up, it's a F sharp, F sharp, G, G, G sharp, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? And then when you don't play on the lowest string here, that fourth string for you, I call it my sixth, but the fourth, you go to the string right next to it, the A string. So you've got that open A, B flat, B, and that's what key money is in, B, 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 B. So what I'd like you to do is just see those as being octaves. That will be your bread and butter. So if you're playing with people and you don't know what key it's in, you hear what notes that in it. So let's say somebody's playing, you can take all the tea in China, put it in a big brown bag for me, and you don't know what key it's in, say it right around, seven oceans. Go ahead and drop it down in the deep blue sea. It's in A. You can figure out what key it's in just by playing one note tonally and then decide whether it's in major or minor from there. As you were very astutely pointing out, the difference between major and minor, minor in our triad is the third, the median. So you've got your tonic and the key is C, no sharps, no flats. We'd have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to C. There is no H in music, so we just go all the way back to A. The idea with sharps and and uh, naturals and flats, that just means where you are on this 2D coordinate plane. So if you put your finger right here on the second fret and play an F sharp, you would know that an F sharp goes to a G or the F sharp goes back to an F because that's how it works. The only two that don't work that way would be E to F, which on a piano has no black key and B to C. If you could think of that, no matter what key you're in, is in major, that your third to fourth and your seventh to eighth are going to be interval movements between two different tones that are where the B's, knees, and the pudding are at, that is where you want to concentrate on. So when we get to scales next week, after going through Pink Floyd and explain why a minor scale is different than a major, what positioning those come in, all of what I'm about to say will make sense. In the key of C, there are no sharps and no flats. So when I say C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, I'm taking my tonic and I'm skipping the half step and going a whole step to D. C to D, not C to C sharp, not C to D sharp, which is a minor third, by the way, that we were talking about today from B to D. This happened to be from C to D sharp, long story short. I wouldn't say C, D, E, F, G, A, C flat, C. I would call that a B. Well, it just so happens that the seventh interval in every major chord, every major Ionian scale is going to be a diminished. Ba, 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 ba. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You want it to resolve to the tone that you're trying to pull towards, the tonic. In this case, it's the eighth, it's an octave higher, but it's the same resolve. So what we're doing in these songs is we're clearly seeing one, two, three, here's our half step. Four, three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four. So in the key of C, C, D, E, F, E, and F are the meat and potato notes. Just the same as B to C R. C, D, E, F, F, G, A, B, C. So you have a whole step from C to D. D to E is a whole step. E to F is a whole step. F to G is a whole step. G to A is a whole step. A to B is a whole step. And B to C is a half step. So those are your two best friends. 
So in the key of C, you could actually hit C. That's where the fun starts coming in. You'll start seeing these as being able to make music. So on to the lesson lesson. C major and D minor look the same for a basis because you're playing the one, the five, and the one. Boo doom uh, one, five, one. If you're playing one, three, and the five, that would be a different story because if you played a minor over a major, those two notes do not work together. They form something called dissonance. Now in music, dissonance is wanted and needed. However, learning the rudimentaries of a major chord, we're looking for the triad. So in C major, you get rid of your second and your fourth. The second in C would be a D, C, D, the third is E, F is your fourth, and G is your fifth. So if you could remember, get rid of the second and third, and you've got second and the fourth, and you've got your tonic, your third, and your fifth, that's a major chord, that's a major triad. The way you get a minor chord is you flatten that third. So in the key of C, C, D, E, E flat would be your minor chord. So your major, C major, right here has the Do, Re, Mi, that is here, or here. So if you flatten that a half step to E flat, you would have a C, D, E flat, and that has a distinctly different tone than the latter, the major. Do, Re, Mi, Do, Re, Mi. I can play it either way, Do, Re, Mi. I just choose to go up there because it's funkier for the fingers to go three, five, six, three, five, six, three, seven. So in a major, we have do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And to get a minor, you flatten the third, the sixth, and the seventh scale degrees. I'll explain what all that means later, but when you play the notes, you're doing a C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. As I said, the C and the D and the E and the F, as a bass, is moving up all look the same, unless you're playing chordal structures, which give you your thirds. C, E, G, D, F, A, E, G, B. I could go on forever. Long story short is, the first one's major, the second one's minor, third one's minor, fourth one's major. Fifth one's major, sixth one is minor, seventh scale degree is a diminished, and it resolves to the tonic or the root. So, what we've discovered is, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do has a lot more life than we just thought. It's not as plain as we saw. And as a basis, what I'm gonna have you do is learn your majors and minors along with the key notes that describe music. You will be able to use your suspended second and your suspended fourth to add a layer of tension to any music that you're playing with. And what I was saying earlier is dynamics, tempo, tension, volume, all these things are key aspects you put together with music in real time to give an expression of what you're doing through harmonic frequencies. So what you're really doing is manipulating sound around you to be able to offer something other than just silence. That's what the bass does for me. So here's what money looks like. We're gonna play a B, which is gonna be on the A string, B flat, B. We're gonna hit the octave B up here with our pinky. Now what I like to show you is you could go B, 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 and then hit the F sharp right here because we have a E, F, I'm sorry, uh, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp. So the B, F sharp. So we have B, B. And the way we do that is we're gonna come down on it with a pop onto the B string. Pop, and then we're gonna use our middle finger and pluck pop, that high B. B, 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 B. You're gonna wanna start it at 60 beats per minute, which is gonna suck, because it's gonna be like one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, and then you're gonna go to 80. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, then you're gonna go to 120 or 100. One, two, three, four, one, two. Most rock and roll is in 120. Once you get those pops and those thumbs, we're ready to rock and roll. Here is the bass line. I'm gonna call out the notes, then I'm gonna call out the um, uh, the frets, and then I'm gonna tell you what finger you should be on the third time after going through it. Here it is real slow. 
B, B, F sharp, D, F sharp, A, B, D, A, goes back in the head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. B, B, F sharp, B. So here's the fretting. Two, four, four, two, two, five, two, five, two, four, four, two, two, five, two, five, two. Alternately, you can play the A and the D open because those are your open notes. D, D, F sharp, D, F sharp. A, D, 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 would look like this. I just don't like it. The open notes don't affect me the way that two and four do. Okay? After you get through that, the feeling of it, it'll be like, they're giving none away, away, away. Now we're going to skip over the... Uh, the middle section because I want to teach you how to flow through there with the right fingers. If you try and teach it to yourself, that's great. Just remember we're going to be probably changing the fingers in which you use it unless you hit it dead on, which I don't doubt that you can't do. Alright, so what happens is you do a B with a pop. Boom, bum, and you're going to move it up a minor third. So B, C, C sharp, D. With the D you're going to do the same thing. And then you're going to move it down in half steps. Back to the B. B, D, Z sharp, C, B, D, Z sharp, D. It's gonna have a boom, chop, boom, chop, boom, chop, boom, chop, down. Uh, thump, pluck, 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 thump, pluck. Will look like this. Actually, let me see if I can make this make more sense. Does that a couple different times, that's the whole run, and then goes back into the. So we're gonna work on this together next week, but just get accustomed to the thump and the pop. That doesn't have to be out here, it's quite literally a. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. And then on the kick of that, we have boom, 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 So if we took out the quarters on the right hand, one, two, three. Four, we'd have one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Da -da 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 -da. Actually, I'm gonna put this down here so that makes a little more sense. Uh, one, two, three, four, boom, Thank you. 
The hardest part, I do believe, is keeping the quarters over the top and then doing your right hand kick. Other than that, you did a great job today. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. And I'll catch you then. Aloha.